Now that we're comfortable working with basic probabilities, we're going to look at different ways we can organize our probabilities and information. In today's video, we're going to look at the question, how do we organize probability information in a table? Specifically, we're going to be in the context of what is called a contingency table, which is basically just a table that lists results in relation to two variables. These tables and this information will make calculating probabilities easier. And what makes it easier is quite often we will add a column and row for totals. So for example, let's say we've done a survey, and we're comparing whether or not people have speeding tickets in the last year or no speeding tickets in the last year. And we're going to break this up into three groups. The first group are going to be our younger drivers, the under 21 drivers. And then we're going to also look at the 21 to 25-year-old drivers. And then we'll also look at the over 25 drivers. And the survey's conducted, and there's 82 under 21s with a ticket, 17 without a ticket in the past year. For the 21 to 25s, there were 39 with a speeding ticket and 27 without. And for the over 25, there's 18 with a speeding ticket and 61 without. Now, with this contingency table, it's going to be helpful that we're going to add an extra row and an extra column if it's not there already. That's going to give us the totals. And these totals are going to make calculating individual probability questions much more efficient. So if we total the under 21, we see we have 99 surveyed. The 21 to 25, total that, we get 66 surveyed. Total the over 25, we get 79 surveyed. Working across the rows, 82 plus 39 plus 18, there's 139 people surveyed who got a speeding ticket in the last year. The no tickets, 17 plus 27 plus 61 is 105. And for the totals, 99 plus 66 plus 79 gives us 244 people total in the survey. And a good way to check that that total's correct is if we add the other combination, 139 plus 105. That should also equal the 244, which it does. And so that, what we have there as that example, is a contingency table. Now we're ready to find some probabilities off this contingency table. For example, if I want to know the probability that someone is 21 to 25, I can see very quickly on my contingency table that there are 66 people in the 21 to 25 range out of a total of 244 people. And so when I divide 66 by 244, we can quickly get our probability of 0.2705. We could also do maybe the probability that someone has no tickets. 
Very similar, I'd say, well, no tickets. The total there is 105. Out of the grand total, which is 244. And when we divide 105 by 244, we get 0.4305 for our probability. We can also do ands, and we can do ors. We can find, let's combine these together, the probability that someone's 21 through 25 and has no tickets. Well, the 21 to 25 and have no tickets are when both of those occur together at the same time. That's where they overlap. Here in the middle, we have 27 people who are of no tickets, and they're 21 to 25. Out of the total of the whole group is still 244. And so when I divide 27 by 244, we get 0 0.1107. And we can change that to an or. We can find the probability that someone's 21 to 25 or has no tickets. And if you remember, the or formula says we have to add the individual pieces and then subtract where they overlap. So 21 to 25, there's 66 of them, plus the no tickets, there's 105 of them. But we have to subtract where they overlap, because these 27, where they overlap, have been counted twice in both the column and the row. So when we subtract off the 27 out of the 244, when we do that math on our calculator, we get 0.5902, about a 59% probability they're one of those two. We can even do given probabilities. Let's do the probability that we're in that 21 to 25 range. Let's get rid of these circles we don't need. Given we know the person has no tickets. Well, with a given probability, we are looking for both of them, or the overlap, divided by the given information. So where they overlap, 21 to 25 and no tickets, they overlap with 27. But we're going to divide by the given information. This time, it's not the 244 because we've shrunk our sample size. Now we're just interested in those that have no tickets. We're only interested in that 105. And so with the given information shrinking the sample size, now the probability is 0.25. 7, 1. We can switch that and see how that probability compares. The probability they have no tickets given they're between 21 and 25 years old. You might pause the video and see if you can figure this one out on your own. With a given probability, we need to find where they overlap divided by the probability of the given information. They overlap, again, no tickets in 21 to 25 with these 27 individuals. However, now our sample space, the given information is just the 21 to 25 years old. And that's the 66. So we'll do 27 divided by the 66 to get our probability of 0.4091. And you can see how we move through each of these probabilities at a much greater accelerated pace when we have the contingency table to organize our data for us. That's the nice thing about the contingency table. One more thing I want to look at, though, is we have this vocabulary word from our previous video of independence. So I want to know, are being 21 to 25 and having no tickets independent. Does that mean being 21 to 25 has no impact on whether or not you had a ticket in the past year? 
Well, we talked about there being three different formulas we could use in order to show this. One of those three formulas says that a given probability should not change the probability if they are, in fact, independent. In other words, the probability there being 21 to 25, given they have no tickets, should be the same as the probability of just being 21 to 25 if they're independent, because the tickets shouldn't impact that at all. Well, we just found both of these pieces. The probability of being 21 to 25, given we have no tickets, is actually here in number 5. That was 0.2571. And the probability of being 21 to 25, we found in part 1, that's 0 0.2705. And we see that these guys are different. Therefore, the probability is changed once we have given information and shrunk down the sample size. That means these two variables are actually dependent on each other. So all we're looking at today is organizing our probability information in a contingency table and taking a look at how that helps facilitate calculating the actual individual probabilities. It also gives us an opportunity to practice more with and, or, and the given probabilities. So take a look at these on the homework assignment. Come to class ready to discuss them and work with these contingency tables a little bit more.